you have the better of the two hats. I've just got a plain old beaver hat. You have a full on, oh wow, coonskin. <laughs> This thing's I think it, awesome. Yeah, and it's also huge. It might work better for you just to wear it over oh, my baseball cap. Your exist <laughs> well, and even even your uh, yeah. I got a little little head. It's even got the little face in the front of it. Yes. Oh, this thing's badass. It is. <laughs> In Minnesota, fishing is more than just a pastime. And while there are plenty of casual walleye anglers around here, a lot of them aren't. On this leg of the Fur Hat Ice Tour, I meet up with one of these pros not too far from the Twin Cities to explore one of the country's most famed walleye fisheries. Is that your hot dish I smell? There is hot dish and there is backstrap. <laughs> Hope you guys are hungry. <laughs> Can't come to Minnesota and not have venison green bean hot dish. Uh, and it's hot dish, not casserole. Let's get this straight from the get-go. Is there something that's called casserole too? Yes. There is? Yes. And what is that? Casserole has noodles. Oh. Hot dish doesn't have noodles. Mandy Yurick is a pro angler who just happens to also work for the Minnesota DNR making her a fishing expert in more ways than most. I think we're in the uh, nicest state in the whole union. <laughs> I caught up with her and her boyfriend to share a meal and get the game plan for our day out on the ice. The plan tomorrow is to catch some walleye. We're gonna, we're gonna head over to Mille Lacs. We've got both Can-Ams on the trailers, um, load all our gear up tonight, haul over the rest tomorrow and then close trailer. We're gonna head out of the west side of the lake, out of Miramar Access. Since I'm a newbie to ice fishing for walleyes, I'm sure I'll learn a thing or two tomorrow. But, full disclosure, I'm also a little bit skeptical of why these fish are so freaking popular around here. Mille Lacs, meaning a thousand lakes in French, is a complicated fishery. Known as a world-class walleye lake, its management often comes under scrutiny from the locals and visitors alike. It's well known, popular, and faces the same challenges that a lot of lakes face with aquatic invasive species. Though uniquely, its conservation strategy focuses on breeding class walleye, and you're only allowed to keep one fish that measures between 21 and 23 inches. This is a very tight window. And honestly, I'm just hoping to hook one today. Don't come with me. Pull against oh, oh, me. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were moving it. No. You're putting it on location. Uh, do you mostly see us fishing with bait, live bait? We're going to put dead stick stone today, one each with the bobber. What does dead stick mean? <laughs> so dead stick works. I really don't know. Okay, so it's just a bobber rig. Okay. So small treble hook with a bead, with a bobber, let the minnow just do its thing down there, and then we're going to be jigging But dead because it. you're not Correct. holding we're not it jigging it. Jigging yep. it. Okay. Yeah, it. You can just set the rod down, watch your bobber while we're busy watching the graphs and jigging for fish. We're going to be jigging with spoons today, and we're going to tip the treble hook on those spoons with the head of a minnow. Okay. And there is a process to do it properly. So today we've got two different kinds of baits. We've got a golden shiner, and that's what we're going to be using on our, our bobber rods. And then I've got fat heads too, that we're going to be using to pop the heads off and tip our spoons with. Why are you kicking the snow back into the hole? Because we're going to push it back now and we're going to hit reverse with this unit, and it'll push all that slush down and out. Look at that. Clean hole everything. We just got minor scooping on the top. But we're gonna end up, we're gonna have three holes today. So we're gonna have one each for our dead sticks. We're gonna have one to jig. And then I'm gonna put a third one in next to it. We're gonna put our transducers down that one. Got it. Two to fish out of, and each one for our transducers for our units. We're actually using golden shiners for these. 
Okay. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna hook him right behind the dorsal and not too thick so he still stays pretty lively. Okay. Up and like that and he'll still have the ability to swim. Well, this one I've got set about a foot off the bottom. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna do a behind the dorsal tail hook. So this one, this minnow will be a lot more active than that one. This one will swim forward, this one will kind of swim in circles. But same, same idea, not hooking it too thick. Why is he more active? Just because he's, he because he like had, the hook in the Correct, tail? He's, he's more mobile uh, this way. Okay. I don't feel like I'm ADD, but I don't think I can have any slush in my hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. <laughs> and how far off the bottom are we doing this one? So you're just a, a, about 16 inches off the bottom. Okay. And leave yourself a little bit just in case we're chit chatting. That's good. You can just lay your rod down. Just lay it down. No rod holder needed. Nope. Just throw it down. We're good. All right. Popping heads. Popping heads. Uh, I'm gonna put a golden shiner head on yours and I'm gonna use a fat head on mine. Seems kind of grotesque. So you wanna put your thumb right behind that fin yep. so you can see it right there. And you're just pushing straight through. The one thing that I like to make sure we've got it out, there's a little air sac in here. And if you don't get the air sac out and you leave it in the head, when you put this on your jig, the head will actually float up this way and it makes it an unnatural I, I know we've got a piece of metal down there with a fish head on it yeah, but yeah. it makes it seem super unnatural so yeah. i want to always make sure that you get that little air sac out of there so that the bait will hang perfectly on there and there's a couple different ways that you can put them on the hook i don't do anything fancy you can reverse put them down i'm i'm pretty old school i like to put that that hook right basically in between the eyes and pop it out through the the bony part of the head so it'll It'll stick on there and just mm -hmm. make sure that it's vertical like that. You, you can't be nibbled off that way. Correct. Yep. It's very weird to have someone uh, bait my hook. I haven't had it happen to me for maybe 35 <laughs> years or so, but uh, I'll, well, I'll let you do one. Okay, thanks. I feel really privileged. Uh, so you don't give me any sort of like uh, advice as like fast up, slow down, or just <laughs> everybody has their own thing and it all, and it, it all works. Correct. Um, what I like to when we get down there, we start marking some fish. Um, when they come up, I like to just barely jig it and then keep rising it above it until it comes up to it and then jig it. And then you'll see if they want to be super aggressive, they're going to hammer it. And if they're not, then just barely jig it. You can watch okay. me. Um, if a fish goes away then, or if we're not marking anything, then you can give it some aggressive jigs or even pound the mud right now pound that, let that jig fall all the way to the bottom and pound that mud and then reel up a little bit and then jig aggressively just to try to catch the flash these also have rattles in them so we're getting we're getting double the the bonus here with them i can't hear it through this hat do you have any fishing superstitions like good luck charms or things you do or don't do <laughs> like in a boat you don't bring bananas correct right? and that, that's still applicable for ice fishing also oh it is yes yes even though no boat involved don't no bring boat. a banana don't bring bananas what do you think it is about the, the banana thing because there's a lot of theories I, I really i don't know but i know some tournament anglers get really really upset they don't think it's funny when you stick them in their glove compartments of their boats <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I've been on the back end of that where I've gotten some cross looks and some cross words by trying to be funny, but I personally do. Like, uh, I always have to have my, my orange monster and normally, you know, my cigar. What's an orange go. monster? It's just a, a sugar-free energy drink. Like, oh, an energy drink. Yeah. Okay. But so it's got to be that one. It's got to be that one and that brand and that flavor only, so... After a bit of time spent jigging with no success, we head out to do a little hole hop. That is, bouncing around and trying to find that spot where the fish are actually feeding. The fish finders that we're using have a device called a transducer that sends out an electrical signal which then bounces off of the bottom or whatever else is in the water below it. The length of time that elapses between the sending of the signal and the receipt of its return is calibrated into a distance. 
That's the depth where you're seeing the action. My jig reads as a thin yellow line. A catchable sized fish will read as a thicker red line. When the red line approaches the yellow line, the angler gets excited. That's the right species. <laughs> Monkey's off her back at least. That's right. Got the goose egg out. Yep. We're in the zone. We're in the zone. Well, I'm psyched to see Mandy get into a fish. I still feel like somebody maybe stuck a banana somewhere in our shanty. Hey, what do you deserve? <gasps> it was here? Oh, there's a god! I just wanted to bait. Figured it was good timing. Fishing's gonna get good now, brother. For Mandy, it did. beauty yeah they are nice fat healthy fish mandy doesn't seem to have any problems getting connected after she gets a hold of that lucky orange monster but i'm having a little slower start no problem i swear i'll figure this out eventually though as the crew cooks a hot lunch and mandy lands even more walleyes i'll admit i'm starting to feel a little more desperate for a fish and since that banana seems to have been removed from our shanty we head back into some relative comfort and out of the wind. There's a fish on the bottom. There is. Yes. So should I lower it to get closer to him? I don't know why I always say him. You say <laughs> him or her when you're talking about a fish. Her. Yeah, you even say her about everything. The weather, the... <laughs> You've been fishing here 15 years. Have you seen the fishery change in those 15 years? Oh, definitely. It, it's it, it's crazy with zebra mussels how quickly a body of water can clear up. And not just changes with the water clarity, um, you know, changes in vegetation, um, changes in fish patterns and fish movements, especially with the walleye. And is that just like, not, so the walleye just can't hide as well when it's not as murky? Or the bait just sees them coming? <laughs> So, a lot of theories. Yeah, so there's a lot of theories in that, but there's some science behind there too, which I'm sure a fisheries biologist could explain a lot better to me. But you know, they predominantly feed and hunt for their their food in darker waters because you know, they can't see them coming. You know, big yeah, fish, other fish yeah. don't see as well in the dark. So, fish it doesn't matter what kind of fish. You know, bright light conditions, they can't squint their eyes, they don't have eyelids, they can't throw in a pair of costas. So you either gotta find vegetation, you gotta find deeper water, or you gotta find structure, like the reefs, something like that, to kind of tuck down and Seems to be a lot more screen time than I expected. Honestly, I'm starting to wonder if walleye fishing is more of a video game. Still, it's kind of addicting, especially when it goes your way. That's a fish. Oh, he's gonna slam ya. Closer to him or right there? Right there, lift up just a little bit and see if he'll chase you a little bit. Okay, drop back down. Oh, right there. Go down a little bit more towards him. Just keeping it right above him. Oh, he's gonna slam you. Come on, come on. Hold it right there. He's gonna bite you. He's gonna bite you. He's all over you. He's all over you. Come he's on. all over you. Just hold it right there. There you go. Just hold it. Those were the magic <laughs> words that made it happen. Just hold it right there. He's on the board! <laughs> Better late than never. He's a youngster, but I'll take it. And see, I mean, realistically, on any other lake, that's a perfect eater right there. Right, right. Thanks for getting the skunk out. <laughs> oh god. Yes. Watch out, walleye yawny. In the ice shack. Thank god. Now that I don't feel like I'm bringing shame on my family, 
I can relax a little and zone in on the graph while looking for new marks. After all, I hear this lake is renowned for big walleye. I'm working another one though. Come on, eat it. This was a, it still is a trophy lake. And yeah. just think, I mean, in a handful of years, how phenomenal it's going to be. Look at the size of the fish that we're catching today. <laughs> Give it some time. You know, there's good forage here, and, you know, healthy class, the perch are starting to come back. And, you know, that, that's really helping all the species, but it's helping the, the walleye too. So you feel like it's on the up and up? I do, yeah. Do you feel like folks will eventually come around and and be happy that they have a great walleye fishery for catch and release and that they can still keep one? That's a, that's a tough one. Anybody who truly loves the sport of ice fishing or just open water fishing recognizes how phenomenal this body of water is. Right. You know, there is days that you can come out and catch 40 plus walleye. You know, you, you can't do that anywhere else. I, I've been all over the place. Uh, and especially in central or north central Minnesota, that just doesn't happen. You know, it's that's an old school mentality that's going to be kind of hard to break. Mm -hmm. That they came here, they 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 want to eat and show off almost what they caught. Well, we've got cameras on our phones, and I'm hoping that that some of that takes some of that relief off of, you know, the need or the want. Yeah. To to have to eat everything that you catch. He's right there again. Oh boy. That's the biggest mark of the weekend. <laughs> Please hit it. Come on. Yes. Oh, he feels good. Stay on, buddy. Nice <laughs> one. Literally one inch at a time, I'm getting bigger. <laughs> he was a lot feistier than the last one. He actually tugged back a little bit. So what's your official guess? My official guess is 19. Okay, my official guess is 17 and three quarters. <laughs> you me to hold it? Yep, he got it right up in his beak. Yep. Just tag over 17 and a half. Pretty good guess there, Mandy. Pretty <laughs> good. All right, guy or gal, thank you. <laughs> See you. Mandy, I'm starting to like walleye more and more, but I s still don't really understand, like, the obsession. <laughs> And not just you, but like in general, <laughs> everybody around here. Like they use, there's walleye on billboards <laughs> for advertising. That you guys love them so much. What's your take on it? Like why walleye? All the other great fish species around here. I think it's just, I mean, they're not an easy species to target, you know, and or to catch. So it's kind of like the premier predator fish you know for people to go and it's a delicacy even in the state of minnesota everybody loves that walleye dinner right it, we call it liquid gold you can trade walleye fillets for pretty much anything that you wanted but i don't know i think it's some of that old school mentality it's starting to you know a little bit's going by the wayside with the upcoming of bass and you know the northern states but yeah. still just one of those magical fish they're beautiful you know they're they're hard to catch but I don't know. It's a Midwestern thing, I think. They taste good. They taste phenomenal, yes. <laughs> and maybe better than any other fish in these waters, right? Oh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble with the perch guys because some people swear mm. by by perch, you know. And you've got the pike guys too. Everything. It's all about how you make it, you know. But walleye for a you know a white fish, meat fish. It's uh, yeah, it's delicious. Oh, come on. I don't trust the graph anymore. I think I might be. Do you have me turned on demo? No, but that would be absolutely hilarious if I would have put it over on simulator mode. <laughs> now, normally I might no, be a little suspect that someone hadn't played a trick on me, putting my graph on demo mode. Though it's pretty clear that Mandy didn't need any tricks to outfish me today. Her generosity, both in spirit and in practice, is abundant. 
And if that's what walleye fishing is all about, then I'm all for it. Up next on the Fur Hat Ice Tour, we head to Sturgeon Bay for a festival unlike any other. 